Hello and welcome everybody to the first episode of the Deroni podcast. For those that don't know, Deroni Aerospace is developing the modern day flying car that is set to revolutionize the way we commute and travel. In this podcast, we will be talking to our team members and industry leaders in this space, talking all about the new developments and how this is coming to fruition. Without further ado, let's start with our first guest. I am excited to have our CEO and founder, Daron Merdinger, with us today and discuss the new developments and learn a little bit of how we got here today. Thank you, Abe, for setting this uh, opportunity here to discuss everything yeah, as much as we can, obviously. Um, I think you know our viewers and our followers um, would really like to understand um, who you are a little bit, give us a little bit of your background, and tell us what brought you to the place where in 2016, you decided that I, I want to jump in and build flying cars. Okay. So um, originally, I was born in Israel. Uh, you can probably hear it by, <laughs> from my accent. Right. Accent. Um, so you know, me as a kid, I was, I was, I was still am probably a, a geek. Um, I like to build stuff, to create stuff. The whole world was, you know, my lab basically. Uh, as a kid, we had asthma. Um, I had to uh, be confined to my room. This was, you know, everything happened to me, my magic. And, you know, I was, I was born at that year where I think the second flying car of the, the movies came out, which is the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Okay, that's I was very enthusiastic about it. Uh, before that, there was Jetsons cartoons. And uh, for me, this was inspiring. And I keep following those movies, the scientific one that, you know, probably most of us have uh, been watching throughout the years. Uh, Back to the Future, Fifth Element, Blade Runner. I mean, some of them, the inspiration are here behind us. And um, for me, it was, you know, we, I knew it was going to happen. The question is really when. And I think the, my eureka moment is, you know, when I was stuck in a traffic jam, saw that kid playing with a drone, right? And see how that thing is so sustainable. Like it was in the air, it was very easy to control. And they said, "Hey, now we know, um, you know, how the propulsion system will work for uh, flying cars because you know we were thinking about Jetsons all the time. And Jetsons mean jets, but jet technology for personal use is high, very complicated. And um, so you know, so this is where I started, basically in my garage. All right, so." Going back to so one year younger, um, how did you get get involved with electronics and design? Um, what what design inspiration did you get? You know to put together because this is a very you know complicated piece of machine, right? And right, and you know, and everybody can see in your designs that it, that you sim- simplify complicated pieces, um, sophisticated piece of machinery. So yeah. Um, how did you get to that? Yeah, well, good, good, good question. So it's, it's really the hardest thing is to simplify a complex um, architecture. Uh, this has multiple things into it. Um, I will go back again to my childhood, uh, where you know I used to you know dismantle everything at home. Um, uh, I had an agreement with my mom that you know I can take you know apart everything at home, but uh, as long as I put it back before my father comes home, right? That was the deal. So my father saw, you know, this kid is very um, uh, exploring. So he sent me to study microelectronics and computers, and which I did. It was, you know, it was the first time back then that they put computers and, and electronics together. Then the Israeli Air Force. Uh, so this this gave me a lot of background uh, of this technology. I mean, obviously, you know, such drones were not at that at that time present, but I had, I understood, you know. The materials, the software, the, the the what needs to be made for that thing to happen, the aerodynamics, and um, so so this was the basic stuff for me. Uh, so when I'm talking to people, when I started hiring people, um, you know that background was already there, and my passion for materials and for technologies. You know, I started working on 3D printing maybe over 20 years ago. So that gave me um, the possibility to create complex morphologies. Uh, I started doing about arabesque design, which was a two-dimensional pattern. So I'm exploding it to a three-dimensional. Uh, so again, that that's we're built into the Deroni. That's part of the knowledge that I was able to bring in. 
Right, then if if I remember correctly, your dad was also a handsmith. He was into yeah. silver, so I guess it's something that you were born with. Yeah, yeah. My my father, the, the, you know, in, in Yiddish it will say, um, yeah, he had like uh, very good hands, obviously, but he uh, a fine maker. So, uh, you know, everything that he bought that was in my surrounding was the highest quality. Um, not just, not the names, but the quality. He knew how to pick the right uh, equipment. And uh, he was a silversmith, um, a very good one, and created a very big business uh, in Israel, which at later stage, I managed it for about, you know, 12 years. And, you know, that we had 220 well, employees. He died when I was 16. But I, uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to, you know, capture a lot of things that he brought in. For example, you know, the tooling, stamping, uh, how to produce in mass production. Uh, then later on, I was able to bring those tooling, those mold into a three-dimensional mold, digitized <clears throat> in terms of what I did for other works. Uh, uh, but yeah, he inspired me also as an entrepreneur who came, you know, as a Holocaust survivor, um, chased by the Germans and the Russians, he came to Israel, but you know, participated in Israeli first wars, independence, and stuff. Or basically, he came think after the independence because he was caught. Uh, there's a lot of uh, in the DNA. There's a lot of things that um, were hard, were challenging, but you know, uh, helped me to become who I am and are embedded inside what we're doing today. Right. So let's let's go back to 2016. So. Um, when did you get to the U.S. from Israel? Yeah, 2013, um, we got uh, my wife and uh, and my three kids uh, came to the U.S. We got a special O-1 visa, which is special talents visa, which was con- you know eventually turned into a green card, and we are we have a residency now. We're a resident. Um, and then I was doing something else. I was working on you know um, in inventing you know, things with the 3D modeling and printing. Um, it was a vast things that we did, tableware, um, you know, furniture, gifts, but I felt... And didn't you make this table? Yeah, the table was, right. again, laser cutting. I, I felt it's not complete because I like design, but I like technologies and I like materials. So, uh, you know, one day I'm getting a phone call from my mother-in-law and she goes like, Daron, I'm uh, kind of angry at you. I'm like, why are you angry at me? And because uh, I, I know I'm a good father, I know I'm a good uh, husband. So what's up? And she said, "You remember the ten years ago?" And we're talking about like maybe almost fifteen years ago from now. Uh, she said, um, "You told me that there's going to be a, a watch where you can basically to, to talk to a person. You know, it's going to communicate. So why didn't you do that?" I was like, "Oh well." So I decided, you know, no more constraints. I'm going to do what I believe in 100%. I'm going to put all my passion on. Even I'm not going to judge myself because, you know, the the biggest problem that, you know, I had was judging myself. I'm not going to be judging myself anymore. I'm just going to go with my passion, my belief, and put all my knowledge and my will into it. And, yeah, and here we are seven years later, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty cool. So if you want to take us um, 2016, you know, you get um, this alignment that you want to start flying cars. You know, it's coming. Take us through the process of, the thought process of, okay, it's 2016. We're barely electric cars. Everybody's like uh, barely thinking Tesla's going to make it. Um, the whole world is like, you walk around, I want to build a flying car. Like, how did you do it? How did you find the right people? And what technologies did you see coming up that you know that this is around the corner? Yeah, so I knew right from the start, you know, it's, it wasn't easy. It was, it's not going to be easy to scale up a drone. Because people think, oh, you know, it's small, let's make it big. It's simple. And I still get those comments today. It's kind of make me laugh because the people who say that really don't understand, you know, the scope of it. Uh, so because you, you talk about high currents, high voltages, you know, uh, wattage, this is a whole new different ball game. And exactly that, that um, uh, technology... At that, at that time, it was really its infancy. Um, so I started, you know, I started just reach out. You know, the first thing, everything that I do is I, it comes with intention. I just make the intention. And what helped me a lot along the process is my, also my spirituality uh, journey. Um, 
you know, for me, the spiritual journey is important as, as what I'm doing here, if not even more. So I was, you know, I started putting the intentions and started writing it down. This is how I started creating my own reality. And things just, just started to happen like a magic. Um, and then I, I, I started getting those ideas, like write the muse, right? Instead of writing a song, I'm starting to create. I have, you know, visions. I see things in my, you know, in my mind. And I started connecting, went on online, uh, forum chats, whatever, you know, anything that I was capturing, this name, that name, that technology, and started putting them together, contacting people, and created a team. The team from different countries. We had from Ukraine, we have from the UK, from the US, from Israel, you know. Um, and then start collaborating with the newest technologies back then, uh, hiring them on different sources, different ways, and collaborating through Skype. Uh, so this is how we started and building it, the actual one in, in our garage. This is, you know, the true American dream, right? Building it in your home garage. Right. <laughs> So when you started 2016, I think 2017 is when you build the first prototype. Yeah, and 18 we started flying. We started flying. Yeah. Um, so what happened in, you know, from 2018? You you built this team, um, Derek and Zar, um, and what happened between 2018 and 20? Because I think 2020, uh, end of 2021, beginning of 22 is really when things really started to pick up. We started building the full scale. Um, what ad advancements um, happened, and what happened to the to the industry in this four years that really got us to where we now? Yeah, that we're so close of yeah um, deliveries. So I started seeing first of all the Air Force, uh, the GT Prime. Um, personally, I was I was I was struggling because I already created that. I had no intention at that point to bring you know big investors you know i i wanted to see to challenge myself if i can do that and at the beginning it was a personal one but then what happened i understood that to to make a business more sustainable it has to be a roadster a two-seater and i started you know redesigning it uh um so i saw i went to cs i think at 18 and i, I the, the thing with me is always i think i'm behind i don't know why i have that feeling that I'm behind, that everybody is already, you, you're, you're back, man. But, you know, I'm, I can tell you, I was, you know, in, I went to CS and then I saw that everybody was behind us, you know, like, and I was like, oh, okay, you know. But then, you know, I redesigned the, the, the vehicle. I didn't have, you know, I had to sell my house because I was not able to, to afford, uh, you know, paying for all this thing. Uh, I had to keep another job just to make that thing happen and continue, you know, redesigning and redesigning. And then I think what was it, uh, 2021, I think we won uh, Florida Aerospace and Aviation Forum. And 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 until then, also people were like, uh, how is it going to work? Who is going to let you, you know, all these naysayers, you know, and, you know, they, they just, the way it works is they they pick up on my own doubts, you know, but when I started to create that thing, it became more tangible for me. And I was like going through my own journey says, dude, you know, you have to understand you're doing it, whatever, you know, you have a family, you have three kids, but you have an obligation to yourself. Go with what you believe. This was my internal voice. And, you know, it just, you, you have to go through those challenges. And then we came up with the H1, uh, which, you know, was like, okay, we have something here and we won the competition and we, we start crowdfunding because this was at that point more advanced way to raise funds and get, you know, the exposure and marketing, and we did tremendous. I mean, we just did wonderful until now. Wow, it's amazing to see the the progress you've done. Seven years all by yourself, and then um, um, you know, I think we got like over a thousand investors in the first uh, yep. in, in the first round. Um, this was With you where you joined. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there's uh, I think there was. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like four months. You were still you were still in the garage, yeah, um, building, and and you had this this dream, and and um, and it was at uh, four months we got so much, so many people reaching out yeah. and showing support. Remember, you came over before the even yeah. before the crowdfunding, and I saw you there. It was like oh, I want to invest. I said, yeah. what do you, what do you want? He wants to invest. I mean. It was like, yeah, like, okay, you know, another guy, or not believers. So those believers, and th that gives me a lot of, you know. Uh, yeah, well, because I remember coming in, 
like to your house and seeing like everything was 3d printed all the tableware all the like um all these um beautiful design things you had and then he like the second to me what i what i like and i believe is when someone works hard on something and believes it really to the core there's a very big chance of happening you know a lot of people don't believe in what they do but the when we were talking about showing the designs even before it was built um it was just fascinating to see that someone can actually do it like you know we all sit in school and design things but we don't really hear you actually like i'm going to do this i'm going to build it then and, and it's crazy to see the transition from the garage into now um we're going to release now the h1 model that i think is really going to shock the world and h1x a sorry the h1x um to come soon yeah so first of all i would like to you know say good things you know i mean you are a young person and you had that deep knowledge in you, you know, this amazed me all right so you know being a young person you know uh, and have that insight is it's not something you know, yeah, because sometimes i feel like you know our generation my generation is we're going to be the ones that are actually going to use it right right um even ones younger than me um in 10 years easily this will be, be something that will be second nature we'll see the ronies flying around we'll see them everywhere yep. it will come bigger sustainable safe powerful. easy to use yeah it, it, i feel like it's going to be the new tesla even in more than tesla like uh i my my view as i see it's like electric cars didn't invent anything new they just created a new way of driving the new way of the car is built different uh a different engine essentially but this is a whole new concept of how you're moving from point a to point b so the potential here is is amazing and the way it's going to improve people's lives so yeah the experience uh, of how people are going to enjoy earth yeah. without the need to destroy it right i mean um if you it doesn't matter with what kind of car you have you still have to have roads and you're still using a four you know thousand year old you know invention called the wheel right. um you know these uh like four uh, ellipticals of rubber touching the ground. And what we're doing is we're going wheelless without needing to destroy our ecosystem. And, you know, people think all the time, okay, you know, we got to go from point A to point B fast as possible. Let's do it with less, you know, painless. So we have the best system, the best speakers, the best, you know, whatever. But here what we, people are going to experience is really going, you know, vertical, and, and enjoying Earth from a different dimension, you know, this is what ex inspires me. They're gonna have a different perspective of time and space, because really, it's you know, you're used to going into traffic. Doesn't matter, you know, where you are, you still see those, you know, objects from here. And now you'll be able to see them a little bit below, like a drone, right? The videos, best videos shot today are shot by drones. But th this gives me a lot of, you know, uh, um. Uh, power to to go forward with this yeah. All right. because this is, there will definitely be a game changer everybody can agree yeah, yeah. that once this is out um this will be bigger than any recent technology that yeah. came out right. um, that's what we believe in. this is a game changer um so let's talk a little bit about the vehicle i think um people um that are not so familiar they so right it's the drone h1 and we called it and now it's going to be the drone h1x um can talk a little bit about the the specs and how do you see the future of it and um, like what is this going to do? Like yeah, um, um, you know the, when I'm thinking about this vehicle first, it's for me is the is the interaction. You know how I'm going to experience it in our daily life. That that's the big thing that you know I'm envisioning here with the team. The team and I are doing wonderful, and you know you, you just go inside to two car garage after you know you, you so what is it it's, it's a two-seater it's a two-seater all electric all electric charge at home and the, we, you'll be able to charge it also this is the goal like uh, you know tesla charger or another ev charger and um and also another thing we're working on is you know should you be stranded somewhere you can charge with a cable um obviously will take more time yeah okay. but um the idea is all electric so in that term, think about electric vehicle, like low maintenance, low noise levels, no pollution. Uh, in our case, very minimalistic infrastructure, right? You need to be able to 
park on somewhere though it's flat right um so you go into and then uh i mean you can do it here you there's a there's a cockpit here a simulator that we've been running for the last year and a half or two years with the same app that you just go inside open the door sit after you did you know uh, visual around the vehicle and and you just the door open of their garage you taxi out just um you know a couple of yards uh, and then clearance mode hit button and you go vertical very so it's as simple as waking up yeah. in the morning yeah. you want to go to the office yeah we'll go into our garage taxi out press a button and take just go yeah three-dimensional elevator this is a very three-dimensional elevator dimensional elevator i think I so how complicated would it would it be to fly like well, because um, when you think, uh, I'm going to ask you a question because most people when they're thinking about flight today is like, you have to go hours to school and it's very complicated, um, um, and complicated avionics and complicated uh, flight control systems. And it, it's a very, it's a very scary, for a lot of people, it's like a scary or I would say, uh, you know, something not that everybody does. It's right. It's not their second nature. Right. Okay. Well, well, like all technologies, you know, if you think about an elevator, you know, when it started, there was an elevator guy. There was a lot of pulley delivery. There was really, you have to have an engineer to control it, right? And here today, you, you want to go to and take the elevator, the high sky harvest, you just type in the, the number of the floor and you'd go. So this is the evolution of our, you know, technology is going to interact with us. This is what we're doing today. I mean, uh, I, 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 I watched how... SpaceX uh, astronauts were, you know, using, they're just tablets, you know. So so this is very an easy control and a semi-autonomous system, an autopilot. Um, and you see every kid today fly a drone. I mean, this is also part of my inspiration is the kids are flying drones. This is like, I mean, I saw my son, it was like, boom, with two joysticks. And what we're doing is one joystick. So it's even easier than flying a drone in a way. Um, and the autopilot will, and the sensors around it will basically reduce pilot's air. Uh, you're essentially f taking off on, on fans, in our case, eight fans vertical, and we have two pushers in the back that will transition you to a horizontal flight. Um, semi tonus means that there are, it's a fly-by-wire computer, uh, but y y you have to have your hands on the joystick uh, in order to control the flight, so it's waiting for your commands. Uh, we will have also the option of uh, yeah, autonomous, full autonomous, which is a type in the address. Um, but we have to see how it will work with the certification where we're going with it. Uh, obviously, it would be easier just, you know, or semi-autonomous to start with. Um, but yeah, I mean, very easy. Um, we're flying a couple of hundred feet above the ground. We're not flying 10,000 or 20,000. Uh, so you can still enjoy the surrounding. You're immersed in Earth. Uh, and, uh, under the clouds, hey, you know, like a uh, higher drone, helicopter kind of altitudes. Mm. Uh, this will be the more comfortable level. So the biggest question most people is like, how safe would this be, right? If you're gonna put in someone, yeah, we know it's gonna be easy to use. People see it, the difference in electric cars, everything. But how, how safe, what are we, like when you think about safety <clears throat> and designing the vehicle, like how, like, what's your thought process of that and how how are you implementing ways that, for example, someone shouldn't be able to hit, crash that building or if something breaks, like, how, how are you, how are we going to make people feel safe and know that this is the safest vehicle they consider? So safety for us is really the most important thing because we need to prove that this technology is sustainable. So I'll, I'll, I'll make a small, a small note about safety though if somebody wants to commit suicide i don't i cannot i don't see anybody that can prevent it okay uh unfortunately we had 9 11 when we had like you know beautiful aircrafts and fa and like you know the best whatever and systems here and people crashed into buildings so if somebody wants to crash a tesla or an aircraft and he really really wants to do it he can do it we believe that the technology that we use today that with a drone including geofencing and other uh, systems that are being used and being planned to use like DFR, digital flying rules, um, this even this risk will be reduced tremendously. You're saying if someone even wants to, we'll be able to prevent them 
yeah um anybody going close to buildings or there's a better chance to do that with such vehicles exactly because these are digital vehicles right they're less mechanical there's a computer there's a gps it's embedded inside the system so you know for example they will not be able to cross uh federal government uh you know area um, buildings or whatever because it's it's embedded inside the software and the system itself um in terms of uh so so the FAA and also you know the FAA probably there is a regulatory regulatory system will be easier for for it to control uh the flight path um and I think as we know they are they're on it including NASA is involved uh in terms of the actual vehicle because again it's it's all electric um we don't have a combustion engine so you know if you have a combustion there's a lot of degradation there's explosives a lot of materials liquids electricity so there's more you know fail system a system that can fail when using um regular motors or engines and electric is is pretty simple straightforward uh um, saying just being electric in aviation is already a safer exactly step. exactly because you know less moving parts you know less you know less uh, explosives every time you have like this this is a, a degradation of the the actual structure um and here we have just electric so electric you know you can you can determine say okay you know what after a thousand hours you need to replace the motor or the battery so this is in the system already thousand hours i don't know i mean just giving it as an example you know you need to replace this will last tw- two th- twenty thousand hours okay so it's already planned uh the next thing is and we talked about you know the, the autopilot the geofencing and then how it's interacting with the pilot right uh it has internal sensors uh, like a drone and you see drones that fly today you know at the beginning they were like you know not maybe not so stable but today the drones are very very stable and sustainable so you just go up and um and interact with and you and you see the the, the joystick you know the the very straightforward you know equipment in terms of um um the, the the instruments uh that you have there um and you can be engaged with the surrounded by just looking at it and you have cameras that will take pictures below 360 everything is there already saying there will be 360 sensors yeah detecting you what about backup if the motors yeah so we have eight vertical motors um and we design it in a way if there's a failure uh, in one, two, or three propellers, separate ducts, right? In every duct, we, we're, do, we're doing ducted fans. So it means you know, we have um, four, and this is patented already, so we have, like, um, the advantages. It's safer, okay? Safer in a way that when you land and your kid runs to you or there's a dog, he will not, you know, be injured by the turning, the spinning of the blades because these are high RPM blades, very quiet, and so you cannot see them or hear them, right? So when it's enclosed... Enshrined, right? You, it's uh, the 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 chances of you being hurt is lower. Also reduces bird strike <clears throat> flying forward because these are, and so this is one advantage. The second advantage will be noise levels, very low noise levels. Also being electric motors, but also being ducted fans, uh, and also it was more efficient. The duct fans are much more efficient because they they use all these energy, throw it to the ground instead of dissipating mm-hmm. in the air. And the fourth, it looks cleaner and nicer. Uh, so this is another uh, safety level. Um, Talking about the ducks, I would would say because when I saw the first time and I was looking into the whole industry and and when I was brought up to the flying cars, they're like, I was looking at who else is doing it and I've seen everybody is doing um, the open blades. And to me, blades. and you were the only one that was like, no, I'm going to do this ducted. I need to be closed because all these reasons for safety. And to me, it's like, it's so simple that there's no way someone would be able to have this in their garage or have kids or the animals or, you know, bird strikes or anything. You'll be, you can't do this without ducks. So to me, just by seeing your thought of going this way and the other companies or other people trying to do it, it's like, I don't see a different yeah. way really to without ducted fans. So yeah, that's so- really unique. Everything, everything that I've been developing, designing from my, for you know, in general, I design it first for myself, <clears throat> and I keep asking those questions. I keep playing devil's advocate all the time. 
why are you doing it? Is it this, this until it becomes sustainable? If the answer you know works with me, so Ducted fans were you know from right from the start. Now I knew and we know the challenges that you know Ducted fans are harder to design, they're durable, um, but even coaxial counter rotating motors. I mean two motors in the safe shaft. Um, these are even harder, but it's doable. Um, the technology is here. It's not like you just have to be perfected. And I like to perfect things. Um, you know, I, I like those challenges. Right. What keeps me uh, up and running all the time. And we have, I mean, we have unbelievable team here that, thanks God, they're all, you know, have talented and passionate and they're doing it every day. All right. I mean, I guess that's you can see the best products in the world. Like you, you can't imagine how like the iPhone or anything, like these little parts that when you really want to make something great, you just make it work. Yeah, I mean, you you have to be you know to be immersed in that all the time into it, and um, right. like like minded people, passionate people that can do it. So back to the safety. So we covered the ducted fans. We covered the anti collision sensors. We covered the redundancy. No, we didn't. Go. I, 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 thank you for mentioning that. The uh, anti collision sensors are, you know, the, the same similar sensors type that we have in a car. So we'll reduce the, the point of impact. Now, again, if you compare this aircraft, this vehicle, to what's existing out there, you know, what we have out there, we have a helicopter mostly and a regular aircraft. Most of the time, these commercial ones are built from aluminum, which is like oh, they've been used for a hundred years. You know, a lot of this is a complex structure, a lot of you know parts, um, which you know the technology of today. I mean, the carbon fiber should have replaced that a long time ago. So we are doing carbon fiber composites, uh, stronger, harder. Like in the form, the inspiration is the Formula One monocoque, which is a structure like kind of an exoskeleton, right? That, a very strong structure that uh, holds it uh, as a shell, and also easier to produce uh, when you just form it in the right way. So that's another safety uh, feature. See those drivers in Formula One, they drive uh, 320 kilo, they hit the wall at 320 uh, kilometers an hour and they come out alive and it's like, wow, you know. So that's another thing, uh, which is this um, on top of it. Um, we also have a ballistic parachute in plan, right? And that's what we do. So in case there's a total failure, which obviously we, I mean, there's always things can happen, but but this level of safety is, to our understanding, is not being implemented in any other aircraft. Uh, the, all these features all together. Um, so you're saying someone sitting in the Roni could be com will be confident that yeah they'll be taking care of it. Yeah. Okay, so that's good to hear. Yeah, that's what I'm asking myself. You know, right. would I fly that? You know, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, like, yeah. I mean, this is definitely, um, me being here, this is always the number one concern um, from the batteries. And the I mean, I would not I would not create or sell an aircraft that I'm not comfortable to fly it. Right. And, you were actually the first one to sit in. Yeah, the, yeah. And, and the first prototype. Right. I'm not, um, I'm not committing suicide here, you know. <laughs> I get it. Um, okay, so we covered the safety, and now, now we're going it starting twenty twenty four. We've built already, you know, three prototypes, the full scale. Tell us a little bit of what we learned from the H one, the one that you flew in, and the team was testing, and now releasing the H one X, um, a complete redesign of the um, air, um, the. The fusel, the fusel, fus fuselage, fuselage, or airframe. Yeah, you can, you can the, um, the, uh, the complete redesign of the airframe. So, can you tell us a little bit, like, what the H one was and how the H one X is completing the picture? Yeah. So, we 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 flew basically control flight inside the, the, this uh, facility, which is. I don't know if any other vehicle at that size can do a control flight inside a vehicle because of the air turbulences that yeah, come inside the warehouse. Inside a warehouse yeah. that comes from the ground effect and you know and, and wind uh, um, uh, walls and ceiling, right? And so we're doing that now. The same type of propulsion system is already implemented in H1X. The difference is that H1X is designed the the airframe is designed to be more efficient aerodynamically because it's all about the energy. Right, it's kind of a, I call it a kind of an equilibrium. You try to perfect a, a, a package 
I'll go back, you know, to the same thing I've been saying the last month is like a Swiss army knife, right? To try to get something perfect that is a high quality, that will do multiple tasks, that will be affordable. And every ball, you know, every nut, screw, ball, whatever wire has to be perfect. This is what we're doing. So we took that knowledge and the last, I think, what was it, eight months, we've been um, working with multiple of engineers, uh, aerospace engineers, groups in the US and outside, try to get to the perfect airframe based on the same type of propulsion system, which we have. And we did, uh, what was that? 13 versions, different versions. We came up with something which we believe it, uh, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing because first it's engineered correctly to, uh, for our mission to achieve the specs that we have. Uh, to at least those specs, we believe we're going to cross them. We're going to do much better, but this is, you know, I don't want to overpromise. I want to over deliver. Uh, and all the advancements we've yeah. been all constantly yeah. Yeah. being introduced to the new batteries and, yeah. um, all the batteries. See, the, the beautiful stuff is that the world is going to, right, to electric vehicles more and more. And there is a growing need for a high energy you know, uh, batteries and our uh, cells, basically. And we are already taking advantage of it. Uh, we are in line, we, we, you know, we research in the market and we get the best cells that will work for us. Then you have to create um, the perfect uh, power pack, uh, which is also, you have to add the uh, BMS, the manage, uh, battery management system and other stuff uh, that will make that thing work in terms of charging and uh, um, and use and temperature and casing. I mean, in aviation, there's a different ball game than just a regular car, okay? Because you have to have light, lightweight. And we're making that good progress. Obviously, with time, it will be perfected more and more. We get a higher range as we improve, you know, we change the cells. And this is our goal also that mm -hmm. you'll be able to change the cells. This is what we're looking for. All right. So, talking about the new design, right? So, the big biggest thing is most people say building prototypes is easy, but production, knowing you from your background in mass production, how do you think of designing the vehicle from the beginning stages that this should be able to be scaled into something that you could start producing thousands of units a year and make this available to the mass? Right. What's your thought process behind Yeah, that? so there's a lot of things happening. First, you know, this is how we work. First, we have to have a perfected uh, airframe in terms of, you know, uh, all the digital models that we did. So it will be tailored to our mission, then testing it, wind tunnel testing it, and we're testing each component separately as well. From then on, you know, the, how, we, how we go, how we see the structure, okay, what, what materials, and this is what we are, have been investigating right now and researching, and you create the perfect, you know, model that has the structure to basically um, be able to um, to work with the loads, uh, with the forces that this that this vehicle needs to do, and we have been doing that. Uh, so we're compiling that together, and then you know how do you mass produce it? You know from well, what the size, what, what what type of molds, what type of te technique, if it's uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, carbon fiber, laminated, there's different types that uh, you can use, different pr processes that you can use um, in order to perfect, uh, uh, but it has to be also cost effective because you can do something which is amazing, beautiful, strong, whatever, but the cost to produce one is not. And so we are working on that as well. So there's a lot of moving parts. Um, so the hardest thing is to make a complex thing simple. This mm -hmm. is what we're doing right now. Uh, that you can see every time the people come here, um, we have a lot of uh, enthusiasts, like we went to Oshkosh and um, a lot of just visitors coming to visit our facility and they sit in into the vehicle and they're like, it's that easy? <laughs> it's, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> it's like, uh, we have the we had a pilot that came in here and he's like, I, don't, I can't fly this, it's too simple for me. It's like, uh, even Charles, the test pilot, was like, if I would design it, I would have, you know, tons of buttons and complicated machinery because that's how most people think of making products or technologies like, like um, you know, more words, more numbers, more complicated instead of, you know, making things simple. So that's really... Yeah, because this is what they're used to do, right? Um, 
you know, somebody asked me, are you an aerospace engineer? So I, I said no, because I believe that if I was an aerospace engineer, I would not be able to create it because I would already be fixed on what I know, right. you know, but there's, I mean, all these, you know, disruptive technologies came with, you know, people who were bold, who were thinking differently, who, you know, might not have come from this industry at all. You know, they had a different perspective. They're not locked. The, the biggest challenge is always time to unlock and expand the way we see things. And I can go into spirituality now, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, maybe this will be for a different podcast. Right. But uh, to this point, um, because we do have a lot of n- a newer engineers that are coming to us, and I remember think in always the first few meetings with you, it's like they're trying to figure out how you're thinking that way and, like, trying to argue with you that this can't happen or can happen, and... And slowly but surely, once they start actually seeing what's going on and starting to work, like, yeah, this is the right way. Yeah. Right? Even when they work with other companies, because they're so narrowed into one way of thinking instead of, like, it's you know, it's a new times. You know, there's new ways of doing things. Yeah, and this is, this is one of the biggest challenges when you're hiring new people. They come with the, you know, preconception here. And uh, how, you know, how fast are we able to work with them to shift the the way they think. So the first thing is always you have to have passionate people who are very interested to work because you, when you have that passion and interest, there's a good chance that you'll be able to make that shift. Right. And you can be a very talented guy, but you don't believe in this technology. I mean, you, I mean you, you, we can't hire you at that right. point because you know, you're know you going to be stuck there, what you know, you think you know, and then your ego will kick in. Oh, that's how it's supposed to be done, you know. You know. I remember when I uh, worked at the, my father business, uh, that we had like, you know, craftsmen who worked in 20, 30 years already. And I came like a young guy, you know, and it was like, no, this is how it's supposed to be done. You know, and I go like, oh man, what I'm going to do now, you know, but, but I, I was very persistent and I started showing, you know, the things and people start, oh, wow, you know, something interesting here, you know. So there's always a challenge. Uh, so that's what we need to have: creative, passionate people. You know, and this this is what we're looking for all the time. Yeah, that's great. I know we have a lot of a big community. We have over three thousand investors, and you know, constantly getting emails and messages like people supporting what we're doing, and you know, people like try to contribute in every way possible. And it's really amazing to see the feedback and that we're getting closer now with. I feel like with all the new technologies coming out with the Vision Pro, people are seeing like that future that was once, um, you know, just science fiction is actually happening, and it's becoming. People are slowly, slowly seeing what's what's going to happen. Yeah, I think I think it's I think we're we're not even at the beginning of the techno- of the change that we're going to go. People think, oh wow, you know, we already have you know phones, cell phones, you know, whatever, you know. I believe we're gonna have we're gonna have major changes, and uh, well, I, I totally believe that the Deroni will create one of the major changes. Uh, or people will understand where they're living, how they're living, you know, experiencing it. But there's gonna be more technologies, obviously, to come, and you have mind shift here. Yeah. Right, it's it's really it's really exciting future, and and, and we're really looking forward for the release of the H1. We do uh, the H1X. Um, I think March 1st is going to be the release date. Um, and we're looking forward to see you. You guys can look in our link in the description. We'll put all the information um, regarding the release. And if you want to guys reach out, you want to join us, click the link, subscribe, follow our journey. Um, it was a really nice conversation, Daron. Um, Thank you. And we are looking forward to the next one. So Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into this episode, and we're super excited about the progress our company is making. If you want to follow our journey, please hit the subscribe button and follow us on social media. Welcome to the new world of transportation.